Hi everyone, it's Christine here and welcome back to my channel. Today I have my third Marie Antoinette junk journal completed and I thought we could do a quick walkthrough. This one actually sold before I could get this video posted. So this one is sold, uh, but I do have two more of this same large size journal that um, will be posted very soon. So keep your eyes out if you're interested in purchasing one of these. And hopefully as we do the walkthrough, um, you might see something that inspires you, I hope. So anyway, I did want to share this one with you. This is the cover. It's a beautiful portrait here of Marie Antoinette. Um, all of the digitals and almost all of the digitals throughout this journal are from Mrs. Cog's Crafts. And I also made this with a combination of Mrs. Cog's keepsake junk journal course and her boho junk journal course and I will link those courses as well as her digital set uh, in the description box below of this video. Um, definitely check those out if you haven't already. I would not be able to make these journals without her course. So anyhow here is the lovely Marie Antoinette on the cover. I have a pretty little heart gem here that is um, attached to a bulb clip. Now, if this wiggles around, the recipient can always just put a little blob of um, Fabri-Tec glue there and it will stay put. I kind of like it, you know, to have the ability to dangle around. But, you know, again, you can obviously glue it down and it'll stay in place if you wish. I have a little beautiful applique flower here, little applique here. This is the spine. I didn't do a tassel on this one because I have this gorgeous spine element here. This is from an applique. And I actually, um, it's two, it was a huge two-part applique. It's absolutely gorgeous. So I just cut off part of it and attached it here to the spine. I thought that was beautiful. And then here is the back, very plain. It's got this beautiful upholstery fabric covering it. And this is a soft cover journal, by the way, and it is made from a file folder. So it's soft, it's squishy. I love the soft ones. I find that there's a lot more room to add stuff because you can kind of squeeze it closed, tie it tight with your closure, and it won't gape on you. This one is packed full of textiles, as you can see, dripping out the bottom there and dripping out the side and popping up out of the top. And we'll go through those as we uh, peek through the journal. But um, I, this is for obviously someone that really likes kind of bulky and fully um, upholstered, if you will, uh, journals. Um, but it is usable. I make my personal junk journals in this style and write in them every day. So um, even though it does look bulky, don't let that deter you. But I do have some non bulky options that will be coming to my Etsy shop soon. All right, so let's go ahead and peek inside this gorgeous journal. It will lay flat. As I said, it is a soft cover journal made from a file folder, a recycled file folder. So um, it'll take a little while for it to kind of bend and get where it wants to get, but it will lay flat for you. Even with all the, the drippy goodness coming out of the bottom and of the sides, it will lay flat. And I always send along um, extra clothespins that I distress. And so those are also great for sort of helping hold the pages open. Or if you have a book weight, that'll work too. But they'll just sort of help keep the pages open so you can journal uh, without, you know, the pages kind of flopping in on you and that sort of thing. So anyhow, here is the inside of the front cover, and I use this gorgeous Graphic 45 paper. It's called Gilded Lily. It's retired, um, but I have been hoarding it. So I just have that. The front uh, inside front cover is very plain. It's just this paper here, a lace pocket. I do have a Tim Holtz word band here, um, and it says Embrace Imperfection, which I thought was perfect for uh, a Marie Antoinette-themed journal. She certainly wasn't perfect, but um, after reading so many historical um, books about her. I have a very new respect for her. Um, she was a, I think, in my personal opinion, a good person and an excellent mother. And she embraced her imperfections. She knew her shortcomings and she improved herself. And I think that's all any of us can do, right? Here is a little fabric tag that I made. And I really had fun with this. I hadn't experimented with collage or anything before. So I just um, sewed on uh, some fabric onto a tag that I just cut out of um, cardstock. There's like a vanilla color cardstock just cheap cardstock from Michaels and then I adhered this fabric to it did some collaging we have an image of Marie Antoinette there a book page from um, a Marie Antoinette book by Antonia Frazier one of my personal books that I've read in preparing this these this journal series and then just some other little bits and bobs that I added to this beautiful tag so you could certainly journal on the back you could um, you know put a this book belongs to just a title page on it if you wished so I just stuck that in the front pocket there. 
And then we have a little library card. It's a little hard to see, but there is a faded image of Marie Antoinette in the background there. And uh, I printed a sort of coffee dyed um, look to the back so you could uh, journal on the back of that as well. So those are just two things I stuck in the front pocket. And then here we go. This is a, uh, a large sized journal. The pages measure four and a half by eight and three quarters. The book itself is five by nine and there are four signatures in this book. All of the pages have been tea dyed, uh, baked in the oven and then ironed. And some of them have been stenciled on. A lot of the pages have quotes that I have found. They are historically accurate quotes. Um, that were made either by Marie Antoinette or made by someone contemporaneous to her time. So here's a gorgeous image. Again, Mrs. Cog's Crafts put some um, cheesecloth along the back of that. Uh, I won't obviously point out everything because you are watching this with me, so you'll see the laces and trims and things like that. So um, I don't want to babble too much in this one. I've shown a lot of Marie Antoinette lately, and in my very first video, I sort of give a historical summary of um, of her and uh, so if you're interested in the history behind this project please check out that first video um, it's it's it was fun to make although I, I, I tell you it's a history lesson so if that's not your you know of your interest then don't <laughs> don't watch it but anyhow um, also all of the tea, the uh, the index cards in the pockets throughout the journal have also been tea dyed baked and ironed and I did a lot of stamping on these cards all of the stamps if they are Marie Antoinette themed are from graphic 45 that gilded lily set I mentioned earlier and then um, some of the other stamps that are on the little tea dyed tags which we'll get to in a minute are from just an old retired Stampin' Up! set. A lot of the pages that I teed out also have some black and white illustrations that are historic in nature along the bottoms. So again, you can see some light stenciling there. Um, so as you can see, as full as this book is, there is lots of room for journaling. This is an actual functional journal, I promise you. I use mine that I made um, and it, it works. It's lovely. So this one, um, again, another picture of more quotes. I won't read all the quotes to you today, but they are all the same quotes that are in that first video if you're interested. A little tag here, postcard. So most of the images are little tuck spots, and so I just stick little odds and ends um, in the little tuck spots so you, the recipient knows that it is a tuck spot, and they can, of course, put anything they want in the pocket. Here is the center of the first signature. Got some of that beautiful gold sari silk. It's called Lurex sari silk when it has the gold in it there. And um, in the front of the first signature of each journal, I do have a longer tie. I use the hidden pamphlet stitch to sew the um, signatures in. And so for the first signature, I just leave the ties long and I've added some beads there as you can see. So they just hang out the bottom with all the other kind of drippings. All right, so here we go. Some more portraits of Marie Antoinette when she was young. The journal is sort of chronological in that the first signature is her youth and uh, as she becomes the princess of France and then the second and third signatures are queen of France and then the fourth signature is the unfortunate uh, downfall. So it does kind of go in chronological order. Some more pages. Here's a beautiful blue jeweled charm here. Hopefully the camera's picking that up. It's very pretty that I have attached to that little lace tab there. Again, lots of journaling spaces here. Lots of little tuck spots. Here's a little pocket here. Some beautiful blue trim here. Whoops, it's a little tucked there. Hanging out of the side. <clears throat> Pardon me. Hope everyone is doing well and staying healthy in these crazy times. I'm thinking of you all. I do have some buttons sewn throughout um, along the, the, the bottom drippings or the petticoats of the journal, as Mrs. Cog likes to say, and I love that analogy. It really does uh, make perfect sense to me. They're sort of like petticoats hanging out of the book. So here we are at the end of the first signature and into the second signature. So the backs and fronts of the signatures are pretty highly, uh, heavily rather decorated as you can see um, with some beautiful bling and um, you know laces and fabric and things. So I thought that was fitting. Marie Antoinette definitely needs her pearls and diamonds and things of that nature. So it's a lot of fun to kind of definitely over embellish. <laughs> Here's a pretty little diamond charm on this fabric lace tab here. Some paper from Etsy. This is just some digital Marie Antoinette paper. Again, just some stamping and some uh, tea dyed index cards in there. 
another beautiful image with again another tea dyed index card and i love this stamp from graphic 45 of marie antoinette um, two signatures in this particular journal have a some book pages in them these book pages come from this book right here that is called Cost History of Costume. I bought this book very inexpensively and it has um, drawings and depictions and, and illustrations of um, history of the uh, costumes rather throughout history. And so towards the back of the book, we get to France and it's just really neat. There's patterns and, and drawings and then the actual photo photographs. So really cool book, perfect for junk journaling. And I added some from this time period where Marie Antoinette would have lived into this journal and they just sort of fold and tuck inside the book, which I thought was kind of a neat little touch. Throughout, there's also lots of beads throughout that are hanging off of some of the um, the side drippings, so just for some fun. Little pocket here. Gorgeous paper here from that Graphic 45 set. I love this page here. I've been wanting to use this fabric piece here. I got this from Sheila Gingrich and it was absolutely gorgeous and I didn't want to really cut it up or anything like that. So I ended up just using it as a background to this beautiful image here, which is a portrait of Marie Antoinette kissing her daughter on her on the cheek. I just loved that. So um, stuck that there. This is just a little bookmark. You can move it throughout the book if you like, um, or just leave it stationary. It really doesn't matter, but it's just some digital paper. And then on the back, I just made a little pocket and I just stuck a little ticket in a Post, or a flashcard rather in the back um, so that just clips right on the page there and as you can see this it does lay flat so you can definitely you know journal in this maybe use the help of some clothespins just to hold it to the side but uh, it's a definite functioning journal which I love here is the center of the second signature which I decked out again. Um, this was a beautiful portrait that was done by a female artist in the at the time which was quite kind of a new thing to let a female in the court and paint the the royal family and um, so this was one of the paintings that 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 female artist did and it was gorgeous so what I did is I printed it and then did some close-ups so you can see all the details of this dress that this one portrait here doesn't really allow you to appreciate so you can actually see in these smaller portraits where I've zoomed in, you can see all the detail and the gorgeous beading and oh, it's just amazing. So I thought that kind of made a cool center spread there. So here's just the remainder of the second signature. Here she is playing the harp and uh, just a little tag there that I put a little ribbon through the top. Here's the other side of that book page with an Ilish, or a, um, photograph rather of a portrait of a beautiful woman in a dress that would have been contemporaneous with Marie Antoinette's time. Little lace pocket here, tuck spot here for that painting there. Another little tuck spot. Some more beadwork here. As you can see that I've just attached to this side lace tinier little tuck spot here. I just stuck a little postcard in there. And then here we are at the end of the second signature. Moving on now into the third signature. Again, still lots of those historical quotes. Um, here's just a little tuck spot for a few tea dyed tags. And I'll we'll just keep going. Beautiful, um, I'm not sure if the bottom is in frame, but this beautiful lace here. This is an applique that I just cut down. Um, it's pink in color. I thought it went perfect for a Marie Antoinette themed journal. Um, just some more um, really pretty tags and images. On some of the postcard or the index cards, rather, I do have little flashcards ad adhered with little tags inside of them. I really love doing tuck spots within tuck spots. It's probably overkill, but it's kind of fun. So uh, sometimes I do that. Here's a fun little feather charm on this lace tab here. And uh, we know Marie Antoinette was famous for her feathers, and that wasn't something that she really invented. She just, as the monarch of the time, um, you know, 
made it stick, I guess, if you will, because uh, it was already fashionable, but became even more so when the queen started wearing it. Here's another book page from that costume book I showed you, that historical uh, costume book I showed you. So here's some patterns from 18th century France, and then on the back, an illustration of a woman in a dress that, of course, again, would have been what people were wearing at the time. Here's a little crown charm here, um, attached to that little lace tab. We're stenciling. Here is the center spread of the third signature. I love this beautiful applique along the bottom here. Um, this is actually from Hobby Lobby. It's bridal um, trim, and I always wait till it goes on sale 50% off because it is a little bit pricey because it has either pearls or rhinestones on it depending on the trim you pick. So it can be a little bit pricey, but um, if you get it 50% off, it's not bad at all. And then I just tea dye it, and it's gorgeous. It just makes gorgeous little. Um, you know, appliques to stick on the pages. And here's another part of it that I've just stuck up here. Uh, you know, you can cut it up and make a lot of use of it, even if you just get a yard. So here's the center of the third signature, another little tag, tuck spot here. And this one, I just put flashcards that have to do with her fashion, hairstyles, poo, fashion on the back, and there's little tags in each of them. Again, tuck spots within tuck spots. They're so fun. <laughs> So just some more. Here's another book page from that book page. Again, just some illustrations and patterns. Uh, again, I just think that is so cool. More uh, paper from Graphic 45. Here's a little pocket that I made out of this gorgeous lace here that has a peacock on it. Um, can you guys see that? I want to make sure you can see that gorgeous lace. Isn't that beautiful? And it's gold at the bottom here. Can you guys see that? And I just sewed a beautiful darker blue button there. But I just thought that was so beautiful. So, let's see. More quotes. Little tuck spot here. Oops, this page got a little creased. No big deal. That'll, that'll straighten and flatten out. Here's another beautiful portrait of her. Tuck spot. I love this little pink um, tassel trim here. Oh, that was pretty more beautiful images. This is her daughter and her first son who actually died at the age of 10. And then here is a family portrait that is uh, Marie Antoinette obviously there, her daughter, which was her first child, her son, her second child, and this is her third child, which was another son who um, became the prince once this one died. But this one actually ended up dying at, I believe, age 14. He was quite young, and he died in the tower once the family, once, you know, the French Revolution, Revolution began, and the family was eventually imprisoned in the tower in Paris. And uh, he died there, um, I believe, from tuberculosis, although he was not treated well, so it could have been any number of things, really. And then the first son here is pointing to this bassinet. Marie and Louis had a fourth child, which was a baby girl, and she died at 11 months. So she's not pictured here because she had passed away at the time they did this portrait, but Marie did not want to forget her. So they have the bassinet out with the little oldest son pointing into it so she would not be forgotten which I thought was a sweet kind of story. Here is some beautiful um, trim and I did some beadwork on it there as you can see and I have a button sewn down here and I just made this into a pocket. It's a very wide trim as you can see and then I just stuck some um, some printed uh, ephemera cards from Etsy onto uh, the the and, and stuck them into the pockets. I cannot speak today, guys. I'm so sorry. I'm trying really hard. <laughs> the words are just not coming out very well. Another little ephemera card. And then here we are at the end of the fourth signature. I've got this gorgeous applique here and a little um, flash card there that I've turned into a tuck spot. Now here we have the final signature, which of course, as I mentioned at the beginning, is sort of the, the last part of her life, the downfall of the monarchy, the uprising of the people, and ultimately her and Louis' beheading. So sort of a sad time for her and her family. Um, that's sort of an understatement, but... You know, again, if you want to know the history, check that first, um, that first little, uh, ah, video that I did. So here's a little tuck spot here, which I forgot to stick something in. So I'll just stick that little postcard there. There's also a little tuck spot at the bottom here. And just, you know, you can see, obviously, the, the, the pictures, the, the sketches that were done and the, um, the paintings, they're just a much sadder, more subdued, 
um, look to them. Here's a fleur de lis charm that I've attached here. Some design paper, a little tuck spot here made out of another of those appliques that I was talking about from Hobby Lobby. They did try to get away, the royal family, and they tried to flee and they were captured. Um, here's a picture of her and her daughter as she was being separated from her children. They were all imprisoned in the same facility but different places and she wasn't allowed to see her children. It's a little tea dyed note card in there. A sketch that was made at her trial and here she is at her trial. Another sketch that was made contemporaneous to her time. Very powerful quotes in this section as well, which again, I won't read, but they're um, in that first video if you're interested. So here's a beautiful but sad, you know, portrait of her and her children. She's saying goodbye, stuck some, uh, and this is also another close up of this, like I did with the dress and the, and the second signature. This is a close up of this, and you can really see the pain on their faces um, when you kind of zoom into the. Um, the painting a little bit. It speaks on a different level, I think, sometimes when you look a little closer. In this little tuck spot is a uh, letter that I have tea dyed. This is the last letter that Marie Antoinette wrote to her husband's sister. King Louis was executed before Mar Marie Antoinette was. Um, and uh, the sister, his sister, was still alive at the time. So the night before her execution, Marie Antoinette wrote this last letter to her sister-in-law, who was actually like, a, you know, a very dear family member to her. They were very close. The sister, unfortunately, never got the letter, and uh, was also executed not long after Marie Antoinette was. But it's a beautifully written letter, and uh, it's quite, you know, historical. So I reproduced it printed it and tea dyed it. And that is in all of the journals. I just think it's kind of a neat piece of history there in the journal. All right, so here we are almost done. Here's the last little bit. Here she is on the scaffolding. Of course, her last words were, pardon me, sir, I meant not to do it. And that's when she accidentally stepped on the executioner's foot before she was beheaded. So sad, I mean, it's so sad. But it's, you know, it's history and um, it's fascinating. And I have learned so much about her in preparing the, these journal series. It's been so much fun. So here's a beautiful applique here on this side. And then here we are at the end. We have a portrait of her um, at the end there. And then here is Louis in his prime. Tuck spot here. And then there's this beautiful doily down here at the bottom that I tea dyed. There's some jewel, uh, beads rather hanging off the bottom, and then this is also a little tuck spot. It's sewn onto the bottom of the page, so I just stuck a little ephemera card in there. Okay, so that is the journal. I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Um, I sure had fun with this series. I've got two left to do, and so they will be up on video soon. They are currently not spoken for, so if you're interested, let me know, and um, I will catch you guys in the next video. Sorry Silk does shed. I know I say that in all my videos, um, but it is true, and it'll, that'll stop in a couple weeks, but uh, for a little while it might drive you a little crazy, but it will eventually stop. So anyway, um, I hope that you guys enjoyed this. Uh, I'll just do one last kind of little close up there of the side and of the bottom. Such a fun uh, journal to work on and such a fun theme to create a jour journal series around. So thank you guys so much as always for stopping by and I will catch you on the next video. Thanks. Bye-bye.